There are many different types of valve, and therefore many different methods of assembly. Here you see valves being made by traditional methods. It will be obvious that the standard of quality obtained depends largely on the skill and dexterity of the operator. Our demonstration valve, however, is being made by the latest hand assembly method. This method uses mechanical aids to assist in the threading of the various components. These not only ensure better quality, but also make the job easier to perform. Even left-handed operators find no difficulty in using these machines. Even in valve assembly, a measure of automation has been achieved. This is the cage of valve type ECC82 being made entirely by machine. Slides pass along the machine, receiving in turn the first mica, the first grid, followed by the first cathode, and the first anode, completing half of the valve. Now the second grid, the second cathode, and the second anode. All held in place by the second mica. It is checked to ensure proper seating. The third mica to prevent vibration. Anode clamping to make the assembly rigid. First cathode tail is welded and lastly, the second cathode tail. You will remember that we left the construction of our demonstration valve as the operator was completing the cage. Whilst we've been looking at the fully automatic machine, the cage has been transferred to another operator who is welding the grid one strip, inserting the heater, and welding the cage to the valve base. Let's look now at these operations in more detail. First the strip, which is used to connect grid one to one of the base pins. And now, the heater. Heaters are made from spiralized tungsten wire wrapped around a molybdenum core and wound onto spools. Here is the heater department, in which the spools are placed directly onto this machine, which automatically cuts the wire to length and bends it to the required shape. The bent heaters are now loaded into racks and passed to another operator who immerses them in a bath containing an insulating material. She next transfers the racks to a glow box where the coating is baked on by passing an electric current through the heaters. Here again, a machine has been developed which not only automatically cuts and shapes the heaters, but also carries out the operations of coating and glowing.
You will remember that during the manufacture of the heater wire, the fine tungsten filament was wrapped around a molybdenum core, which served as a mandrel during the winding and as a support during the subsequent operations. As this core is no longer required, it is removed by immersing the heaters in a bath of strong acid, which dissolves out the molybdenum, leaving only the coated tungsten spiral. The cage assembly is now ready to be welded to a base. This is the part of the valve which will later be plugged into a valve socket. Many types of base are made, but the modern glass base is now the most widely used. It consists of a circular glass pressing through which pass the metal pins which will be used later for the electrical connections. The bases are made on this type of machine, the pins being automatically fed from a hopper into the molding head. At the next position, a glass ring called a bead is fed from a hopper and placed round the pins. The head moves through a series of burners. The glass becomes softened. And a toothed wheel presses it between the pins. At the first pressure, the glass is flattened. And at the second, the final shape is imparted to the base. Cleaning chambers now remove oxidation from the pins, and the finished base is automatically transferred to a conveyor belt, which carries it to an inspector. Before leaving the process of base making, it may be interesting to see how the various parts of the base are made. 